All right, as mentioned in a little foreshadowing, we've got here two methods for preparing the operating cash flows on your statement of cash flows. So the operating section of the cash flows statement can be calculated and presented in two different ways. We have the indirect and direct method. And I'd rather just show you rather than talk about it here. So indirect method calculated through accounting for accrual-based components. Direct method is directly through inflows and outflows. I like the direct method. It's pretty straightforward. So the direct method, it's a lot of times going to be using our balance sheet accounts. And those. this is a common, common format for questions because when we net it together, the increase and decrease in receivables, you know, let's say we've got a 20, I'll just use simple numbers, $20 increase in receivables and a $30 decrease in receivables. Well, how do you, generally speaking, when you have a decrease in receivables, that means you collected cash. Let's think about the journal entry here. Journal entries are going to be super important for our section here. When you collect money, it decreases receivables. So that's why increase in receivables is a subtraction from cash because it doesn't, it means you didn't get your cash. And decrease in receivables means you did get your cash. Uh, increase in unearned revenue, that is cash in the door. So it's kind of, Kind of thinking like cash basis accounting. It's, I mean, it's similar, right? It's not really like thinking about recognizing it. It's more so straight up cash in and out the door, like just bare bones. We want to know is the money coming in or how much money do we have to do what we will with? Like maybe we haven't earned all the money yet, but we want to know how much cash is in the door. All right. So yeah, basically the direct method is just any journal entries that have cash in them. We're going to net them together. That's all it is. All it is, it's pretty simple at its core. Indirect method is a little different because we'll start with net income and back our way to find our cash balance. So all of these items here, feel free to read through them, just using our balance sheet accounts and determining how much cash we receive. So cash received from customers is the first one. Next, we deal with cash paid to suppliers and cash received from customers. Pretty standard. I would definitely pull up a statement of cash flows while you're doing this section and reference it, that is always super helpful. Always definitely helpful to reference the actual statement on the section that you're going through to see where it is in reality, right? You can point to it and say, okay, this is real. Again, we've got balance sheet accounts. So I'll jump here, increase in wages payable. Why do we subtract that? Well, because an increase in wages payable versus a decrease in wages payable, a decrease in wages payable means that you paid out cash, right? You paid out cash here. So we net these together and that gets your cash received from customers. Let's think about your journal entry. Well, when you pay wages payable, you are going to debit wages payable to decrease your liability and credit cash, which as we know, reduces cash. Same with cash paid to suppliers. We are going to take into account the net effect of the increase or decrease in inventory. What's our journal entry here? This journal entry is going to be a debit to inventory, debit to increase your asset, and credit to cash. So that's cash out the door. However, if your inventory is going down, we're going to increase our cash balance. Same with accounts payable. This is cash out the door once you pay it down. Same thought process and mentality there. All of these items will be accounted for in the direct method. This is still just a good overview, right? We have a lot more to talk about it. And the best way is with examples. So practice, practice questions. And then lastly, cash paid for other expenses. So other operating cash payments that decrease cash. How do we calculate it? Well, this is how we do it. Think about the journal entry here. Think about the journal entry. So prepaid expenses, you're going to debit prepaid expense, which is an asset. You're going to credit cash. So that would be cash out the door. So you net those together. And that is going to account for part of how part of the cash paid to other expenses. And then a decrease in accrued liabilities. Well, how do you decrease your accrued liabilities? You would then pay them down. Another balance sheet transaction that affects your cash balance.